Good evening again. I'm Jim Mansfield. I'm from the Washington Transportation Department. Uh, first, we want to thank everyone from the North End that has been so good at coming out to the public meetings for the hazmat situation. You know, that process is really going well. Uh, we've been very pleased at the amount of people from the North End that have been going to those meetings. They really are helping us make the argument. Uh, I believe thrown in as the last meeting of the state's process for the public hearings. Uh, so after that, we'll find out what's going to go on with the state. But we're very um, pleased at the cooperation of the North End neighborhoods, and we thank you for that. Um, it's been a pretty busy summer for parking violations in the city. Normally, we do not, um, we're not able to break down parking violations by neighborhood. We usually do it by police district, but we've been doing special surveys in the North End, uh, something that uh, we've been asked to do by the Traffic and Parking Committee, so we have done that. Uh, from June through August, uh, there were 13,566 parking violations issued in the North End. Um, 3,512 of those are written in parking violations, so about a a fourth of the violations that are issued in the neighborhood that are resident parking. They have picked up. Um, in June, we issued 1,029 resident parking violations. In July, it was 1,251. In August, it was 1,233. We've seen some increased enforcement over the last couple of weeks, so we're hoping that that will keep your resident parking spaces safer than they have. We have talked to the Traffic and Parking Committee. There has been some discussion about changing some of the two-hour parking in the North End. Uh, to make it more available for residents. Uh, we're going to take a walking tour, I believe, to, to look at some of those spots and make some determinations on how that can uh, best be improved. So we're willing to work on those type of issues as well. Uh, we also have the question about street cleaning. You know, we did the pilot program where now we have year-round street cleaning uh, with a small stop uh, and weather conditions. That is going to continue for the next year. We haven't seen any adverse reaction to that the streets are definitely yeah. cleaner in the North End. So uh, that's something the Public Works Department makes a determination on, but uh, we will be doing the ticketing uh, for that. And as it relates uh, to general things in the North End, you know, we've seen some construction activity. We are working closely with uh, the Water and Sewer Commission, as you've just heard. Uh, we will be working on the hours of the work and when the work is being done. One of the things people should realize that so we, we're looking at some winter construction on this. Usually there's a moratorium for excavation in some streets from November 15th through April 15th. So it's something we'll have to work at the Water and Sewer Commission to make a determination on what is best for us. Uh, in terms of construction, public works is also on board, so that's going to be ongoing. And we'll be glad to come back with Water and Sewer once those decisions have been made. We heard your preference for the, the 8 o'clock track taps, and we'll push that as well. Thank you. That's why I have so if you have questions on how you want to Do you have any opinion on this You know, we have done in other neighborhoods. It does seem to make some sense. You will have to change the parking regulations as well because parking has to go in the direction of the street. Um, it's the first I'm hearing of that change uh, tonight, so it's something our engineering people have to work with. We'll have to, don't have to talk to EMS and fire and police to make sure that everything's accessible. That is something that is Yeah, because I'm even just to whisper to me on the way out that she would like us to take a, a look at that. That's fine. I can actually talk to our engineers and have them get back to you guys. That would be great. And then we can get the outside of the I mean, we'll get back to you after. So you'll get you'll back to us. Great. Perfect. Thank you. I will email them uh, to the group and get them up. Okay. Um, any other comments? Any questions in Jim? More of a, a, a comment. Uh, thank you, first of all, for coming. I really appreciate your time. Um, I know last year uh, we had uh, talked about uh, the hours of people living around the two vehicles, especially during nights for the garden event. Ruins me. Uh, again, we're coming back up to that season. Um, I, I'm not. I'm still a little unclear as to where um, the Boston Garden stands with uh, regard to paying uh, any overtime employees. If that's even the case, um, as we know that. Uh, that way, uh, the Red Sox organization does do something like that. Do you elaborate that on that? A little no bit? one has to transition, so we have no agreements with anyone okay. to, to do uh, law enforcement. But there are some, Fenway has some uh, details, police details, so there are, you know, increased uh, presence of police officers, but no increased presence of enforcement officers. However, the police do pick up some of the enforcement pieces as it goes on. We um, are on the street until about 10 o'clock. Um, doing resident parking, doing other types of enforcement. We know when the games are, so we are in the area when there are games. Uh, we also ask uh, the captain's office is very good at, at adding extra enforcement, but there are no agreements from anyone that allow us to pay for someone else to do extra enforcement. Thank you.
those games. But we do do a, a lot of enforcement content during those, those games. And other than the mayor's hotline, um, I know people can call when there's issues with the parking or anything else. But is there any other sort of number that people can reach Yeah, the best number for, to getting a meter matrix come out and respond is 617-635-3125. Uh, on the overnight, that is manned by Supervisor Irene Landry. I've met a lot of you who have spoken to Irene in the past, but she is excellent. And they do have people in this area, so it's easy to get some people out Thank you. Can you repeat that one more time? Yep, 617 any other council members have any comments, questions? John? I was wondering, uh, during those months that you talked about, uh, those are also in, in, during the feast, right? What, what do you guys do differently uh, to handle transportation? When, when there's a special event, we actually have more people coming to the area because we want to, number one, make sure that the streets traffic is moving, that the valets are operating appropriately, that the streets aren't blocked down with other parking. So we do increase the number of people that come in and do enforcement. Uh, we also know that there are more people that are trying to park in the neighborhood during that, and we don't want to have them taking up the residential space. So we do increase supervisors and um, enforcement personnel during special events. Does that increase the number of tickets too? Do you see that same re revenue, 13,000 tickets coming out of North End during months that are summer months? Mm -hmm. you, see, you see it go down. You see, um, usually our average is about 1,000 tickets, 900 tickets. So you do see it increase during some months. And it also depends what's going on. You know, winter enforcement can inform what we're doing, street cleaning informs what we're doing. So, you know, you see peaks and valleys, but that's, that's an average. Well, besides so that, like the number of spots that are being taken away, the residents are. Um, like with a, if a movie production came to town, you'd be able to take tickets and go to park somewhere. Yes. But nothing's being considered in terms of with all with all the spots that are. For the piece? Yeah. No. Why not? They're considered non-profits. It's a non-profit. So. so if it's a profit, that's the only that's how you determine whether or not. Those are just for BTD tickets, right? Though. Those are just well, BTD not. tickets, right? These so are not police the, tickets. Police could have a separate number. For the tickets, yeah. I'll give you five minutes. Total violations were thirteen thousand five hundred and sixty-six, and resident parking violations were three thousand five hundred and twelve. Is that the worst in the city? Uh, no, Beacon Hill back pay, um, South End, they they have higher tickets. Well, we're larger. Yes. Larger yeah. Any other council members? Okay, Ann. Ann Story on North Market Street. Um, I have two problems. One, uh, we have fire lanes, handicap accesses, crosswalks, fire hydrants. And I find it very annoying that a lot of businesses think that those locations are drop-off pickups for their customers. They're not. Um, so if, if you have a specific problem area, give them to us. We'll do some, some enforcement of them. Just yes, having right. those areas hit so when we know that people are parking. Well, it's happening all over the North End. Okay, we'll, we'll take some attention. And um, the second problem is um, there's very limited parking in the North End. And who made the determination to um, add all the visitor parking and um, commercial parking, taking away from the residents who live here? And then in turn, the residents have to go pay to park in the garage. There, you know, we have to balance everyone's needs. And when we put in a resident parking program, the residents took part in discussions on where visitor parking was going to be, where there was going when to be parking. Years ago. Many, many, many Tom years ago. Yeah, Joe Giuliano was the commissioner. But we always do relook it, but we have to provide parking spaces for people that are also coming in to visit. So we can't make everything strictly commercial or anything strictly residential. We really have to have a mix of it. And the North End is a community where we have such a joint of the two types of places that it's really hard to balance those needs. We're always willing to look at it, and that's one of the things we're going to do with the traffic and parking page to look at some of the two hour parking to see if we can change some of that. Uh, but you know, we do have to balance everyone's needs. Well, um, how many parking spaces are there? I don't know off the top of my head. I heard around 1,500. <laughs> yeah, I know. That, that, that's probably not parking. So spaces. we should have a very small percentage of visitor parking and commercial parking in relationship to the, the residents. Because if there's 1,500 parking spaces, um, the assessing department told me there's 1,200 buildings. So that means there's a little over one parking space per building for every building in the north. Parking spaces 
don't go with assessing. So you can't make a determination no, no, about these spaces that are out based on that number. So you can't, you can't look at it that way. You have to look at what the street can hold. Um, you can't. You don't want to cripple your own neighborhood too by having not being able to have visitors come in and visit you or having health no workers come in. <laughs> so you really have to balance, balance that, that type of thing. You know, it's not easy in, in the North End. I, I live in Charlestown. It's small there as well. We have more parking spaces, thank God. But you know, there you have to balance those needs. And you, we've had discussions with the North End and changing things in the past, and we're willing to do it again. You know, again, we'll try to do a traffic department committee. We are going to work with them on, on looking at some of the two-hour parking spaces. What about the exempt residential exempt? We, that's one of the issues with the two hours. But would that, would that mean that if there's a two-hour spot, if you have a sticker, you don't have to worry? In, in any visitor spot? That's correct. It would mean any visitor spot, right? Any visitor spot. And then finally, um, a lot of people that live in the North End move out after a year, and their sticker is still good. Uh, the technology is a wonderful thing. That used to be the case. Um, we are tied into the registry of motor vehicles system. So once they move out, they do change their addresses. The registry gets that notification. We get an alert on our system. We go through this on a monthly basis with the registry. The parking officers now have handheld ticketing machines. So it's not the, the pad of paper anymore. They have handhelds. They go in and put plate numbers as they're going up and down the street. If it's a resident parking permit, they put in the permit number as well. It'll show if that ticket's been that ticket's been revoked. So if they've moved, the sticker is revoked from the system. They issue a ticket onto that paper. Is there any way to uh, monitor uh, the valet? They, they they suck up a lot of spots. They know all the different oh. spots. They know all the tricks. And, uh, there seems to be no monitoring of that. And there's no control. If there's an issue with that, I can have we have I'm Denny Uzo, who's a resident of North End, is in charge of LA, so we can definitely have them come out and talk. And a local cop tag a car that's parked in the designated area where there's not supposed to be a drop off and pick up. Yep. That's always congested and that's why they're doing business in the middle of the street. Yep. If they have three going fury, both sides and the ambulance is tired. You're not allowed yeah. to keep any vehicles standing in the middle. Yeah, but that's, I've never seen any enforcement on that. I'm mm -hmm. out there every day. I know they do do something, but you know, that's something they have to have anyway. Uh, one more question. You mentioned the pilot program for the street cleaning. Yep. It's still in effect, which is year-round. Yep. Uh, we had a meeting at City Hall last year, and they, they we compromised to not have it January and February. Right. No, they stops for a time period. So okay. It stop during January that's and February. It starts again in March. It starts in December. Right. That's what it is. It reopens again. Uh, month, it, gives, it pretty much gives you a month longer than the other red people. So it runs for a month longer. It's also weather dependent, so if it snows or something else happens, they stop. Jim, we definitely have a question. Uh, 780 Henchman Street. Uh, given that we're going to have um, all this disruption on Salem Street, and we also have that extended street sweeping program, is there any chance that the city would open up temporarily some spaces in some of the city lots to residential people who are being displaced because of Salem Street being worked on and street sweeping going on? The transportation department doesn't own any lots in, in the North End. Uh, we do have some municipal parking lots in other neighborhoods don't have any here. It's something we could talk to um, Nicole Leo, see if she can coordinate something. But I know the BRA does own some, some parking lots there. So it's something that I think that do. might help alleviate the parking problem while this whole Salem Street project is going on and we've got the street sweeping as well. So good to talk and to I don't own a car, so I have no self-interest here. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I think I'm all for, for taking away some of the visitor spots because it's the valet people that are parking their cars they are not taking them to their garages or anywhere they have to go. Sometimes I have to argue with some of them valet to park. And they're taking all of the business. You know, if you're spots. finding a valet operator that's doing that, we need to know that. And I, you know, we can get it to me that if people are responding to because that is against their license. So they can be suspended from their license, they can have a, they can even have their entertainment or their new license taken away based on abusing that power. So if you have those stuff, uh, I'll leave my cards and you can email me on You're not out here, Steve, you can't. Who would, who, I, I, I guess during the, so they're going to do the source. So how about we don't do street sweeping on, on Salem Street? Who would, who would we go with? Would that be something we go through you or Public Works? It has to go through Public Works. It is something we do on a regular basis uh, with major construction projects, and we would make public, we would make uh, the Water and Sewer Commission clean the street. 
uh, much like we do with, with movie companies. If they're going to disrupt it, we'll have that Queen Street that we both prefer. So, you know, they left a Dead Street in Queen and going to have their own sweep of street. But that's something that is on the table. I know they're going to discuss that with the okay. list of those Again, it's not on property, um, so that's something that I think BRA owns that lot. Uh, so that's something we have to discuss with BRA. Anybody else? Well, Jim, thank you so much. Well, I'll catch you in a Thank you for your patience. Oh,